o'clock, we'll call the uh, meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Hadley Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm uh, Andrew Barbadier. This is Iris Tang, Jason Galvin, members of the board. Um, we have four hearings tonight, so we'll get started with the first one. <coughs> first one is 101 East Street. It's a public hearing. I request for a variance under 6.2 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw, Safi Properties LLC. Property is located, as I said, 101 East Street, parcel ID 04J005005, sorry, dash 0000, business zone. Uh, applicant proposes removal of existing non compliant structures and replacement with a new building and is seeking relief from the front setback requirement on Russell Street um, for a setback of 40 feet. Uh, is anyone here on that one? No. Come on. <laughs> My name is Lawrence Tuttle. I'm with Architectural Insights. We're working with the dentist on the generation of the proposed structure. Can you, uh, can you just tell us what, what you guys are proposing to do here? Right. Uh, we're, we had sent, I don't know if it got distributed or not, a rendering. Yeah, was that mm -hmm. digital? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah of the, uh, the building, which we feel is, is uh, interpreting the guidelines for the district with the uh, different architectural details on the, on the building. And- This is the historic overlay district? It is on the fringe of the historic district. But not actually in it? Uh, it's a debatable line <laughs> on, on the GSI mapping. The structure that is presently on the site is non-conforming, non-compliant as it's in the right of way of Route 9, uh, would have to be relocated. It was reviewed by our structural engineer and its chances of survival being relocated are negligible, not impossible, but probably not, it would sustain significant damage. Also, if it were used for anything other than a residence, it would have to be entirely rebuilt because it's understructured. Uh, currently, the energy code in Massachusetts that will be enforced with any projects moving <coughs> forward would also obliterate the uh, the building because you have to insulate outside as well as inside the walls. How old is the current structure? The current structure was built in the mid 1800s. With that, um, it looked at one of the drawings that Iris had, I think from the GIS, mm -hmm. that is that is actually over the property line, that structure? There is a portion. Right away. There is a portion. <laughs> now, this, obviously, the building preceded any changes on Russell Street. Uh, the prior owners did receive some compensation for land taking. Uh, I do not have any record of that being conveyed to the current owner. So I, I don't know where that stands. Was it, is, it, is the current, uh, Construction on Route Nine the impact in the property at all? Was the property going to have to? Was the building going to have to be moved as part of that, or no? Um, it's very it, close. It's close. The barn was marginally standing, and the L to the the original house uh, is some distance away. And this is the positioning that we would propose. It's a, it's a valley building called LLC bought in 2017 and they did some improvement. So is that just as a siding or something? They just, to my knowledge, they only initiated some siding on the building, which we looked at it and it's actually been trapping moisture and degrading oh. the old <laughs> side. <laughs> so, okay. I mean, it, it's cosmetically it was nicer an, an improvement uh-huh okay <coughs> I see. is the building occupied now is the building occupied it is rented okay 
So the um, so the current building has no setback. Um, Correct. <laughs> it's a you need it's a fifty foot setback there in the in the business district that yes. you're supposed to have. Yes. And the proposed building. We propose that the primary facade be at forty feet with the the bay is the hash, in is that front the hash, of that. That's the hash part there? Yes. Um, the reason that we took that position is that it follows consistently with buildings that presently are on Route 9 for the setback. Um, and also it has a develop, site development that adds safety for not only the users of the property, but the general public. Part of it is that the current curb cut, which is adjacent to the limits of the existing <coughs> structure, would be moved to the top, to the far corner of the, the lot with the given setbacks to property lines. So Mr. Tuttle, excuse me, it, mm -hmm. Tuttle, correct? Yep. Um, you said that 40 feet is in line with the other adjacent properties? Yeah. On this diagram, this is not, mm -hmm. this was taken from the, the, the computer. Sure. So it's not surveyed, uh -huh. but that line is the line that we're talking about. Yeah. And, and this line. Okay. So that there that, are. That's the 50 foot line, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But they're over there. Yeah. Yep. Right. So we were saying, okay, the recent about 10 feet taken we would just like to be in proximity with the adjacent buildings for context. So it is possible it could be outside of the 50 foot buffer without impacting the access to the parking lot? It would reduce it to a, not an unsafe, but certainly a pinch point Tighter. for okay. emergency vehicles and two-way traffic. Okay. So th we were, that's why we came to the board with the, the request for relief to the 40 foot. But it, has you, have you been before the planning board already? Informally. And they sent us here immediately. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to bring up is in the Hadley Master Plan, <clears throat> the area in question was a, a suggestion, not necessarily a given, was to change that corridor along Route 9 to a 30 foot setback hmm. because they were promoting a greater density along that commercial area. Yeah, 50 foot's pretty big and then you're on the corner there so you have 250. Right. You have, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we're meeting all of the requirements and asking for no relief on the other zoning issues for East Street. Because if you've been to that intersection, the intersection now has signal control poles that are not something the doctor really needs to be nestled up close to. Right. Um, and so that shaded area, that porch, there's no access to that. No. The, the entrance will be from the, <coughs> the yes. E Street yes. side. And yep. Okay. Yes, that's <coughs> just windowed areas for the operatory, so the doctor is okay. proposing. So is that is that foundation or is it just like awning over pet no, footpath? No, it is foundation. Okay. And that okay, shows I see. In that. All right. It's that area there. Right. And the gable breaks up the yeah, but, right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean I've. I've I appreciate that it's in line with other non-conforming structures along Route 9 and that, it, you know, it would be... I mean, we can physically make that gap in the teeth of the <laughs> going mm -hmm. down the street, but uh, it would look awkward, I think. So it was an aesthetic purpose um, to match the neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, there was at least a suggestion in the master plan that was submitted to the town for adoption uh, to reduce the setback to 30. We're looking at 40, even with the widening of Russell. 
Um, we moved the curb cut away from the intersection. Part of the zoning interpretation for the 50 foot and 50 foot is a, a, just a fixed stop sign intersection mm -hmm. so that you have visibility mm -hmm. and now you have a actual traffic signal at that intersection so that it's more of an urban <coughs> sort of intersection because of the traffic volume. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not even sure if this is a total variance one because the existing structure is right on top of the road like that like this is kind of similar to the car dealership that we had recently where they're taking down the car the car dealership is currently 15 feet from the road and 15 feet from the setback and then the new one's going to be like 30 or whatever but uh here for variance, so we'll consider it as a variance. But I, I, well, that's know. what we were yeah, told yeah, by. Yeah, right. So, so sometimes it matters what the other people think we should be anyway. But uh, <laughs> I mean, because I mean, because you're making a change to an existing structure that is not conforming. So there's at least an argument that is actually a we're like lessening the non conforming. Yeah, it's actually going to be less right. non conforming. It's going to make the it's going to make the area look nicer, and it's also going to um, make the area safer. It's going to be a safer intersection to get that building right off the corner there. I mean, presently the grading at the existing home is so steep that the fines are washing out onto the sidewalk at this point. So yeah. I mean, it's, oh. it's really a maintenance issue because there's no vegetation growing on that banking. Will the grading be addressed if it went yes. the structure? Okay. Yep. Yeah, because uh, the traffic, the speed of traffic and volume of traffic will have spray onto the property, yeah. and so that's going to be compensated with a swale. Oh, there's going to be a swale along Route 9 there to a catch or something like that? Just as a buffer. Okay. Um, have you had discussions with any of the neighbors that have opinions about it? I have not had any personal discussions. We sent out the list to the letters. Mm -hmm. Are there any public comments? Is anyone, anyone here uh, who wants to speak to this uh, this project? Andrew, yeah. Do you want me to sit right here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm Danny Terenzi. I'm a permanent coordinator for the building department. Um, as Larry is saying, too, um, because we have to be brought up to code and turning it into a commercial building, it'll also have to become handicap accessible, which, as Larry was saying, um, making it energy efficient is going to downsize the inner parts of the rooms, and so, which is going to make it harder also to make it handicap accessible. I mean, just the fact that it's more in line with the other buildings along Route 9, I'm comfortable with it. Um, and also, you know, getting a structure off of that corner for your right turns onto Route 9 um, is definitely beneficial for safety, as Andrew stated before. Um, well, I, I feel so content <laughs> to buy that house a gazillion times, so yes. We thought so. <laughs> yeah. So this is for a variance, though? Yeah. Actually, all this uh, parking I noticed uh, was, uh, this uh, was shown on the last uh, transaction, 2023. Mm -hmm. So the current owner just uh, already have you this kind of a design that before? Um, well, we actually, the current owner uh, entertained getting some schematics done by another office. Uh, and we had some anxiety about the direction it was going in because it retained the curb cut very close to the intersection. It pushed the building further back. Mm. Parking was similar because that's the shape of the yeah. of the lot. Um, but meeting with the, the doctor and seeing his space uh, that he's currently in, 
he was very interested in getting as much light and brightness into the into the space to mm -hmm. make it a pleasant spot not only to have staff work all day or but also mm -hmm. to encourage children to come to the, the practice so we did make we took some liberty artistic license <laughs> Was you? Um, well, with all that said and the public comments, um, I'm comfortable moving forward to make a motion for granting variance, if, unless you guys have any other input. Um, so then I'll go ahead and make a motion to grant a variance under 6.2 of the Hadley Zoning by, uh, Bylaw, excuse me, by um, Safi or Safi? Safi Properties? Uh, Safi Properties uh, for the removal of existing non-compliant structure and replacement new building with setback of 40 feet as shown on the drawings provided. Um, anything else I should add to that motion? No. Other than we will be still going to planning for site plan review. And science. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. It's not like we got to yeah. Yeah. Jail free. So yeah. So we'll just add that it will be subject to any other any other conditions, board conditions board 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 any of the other boards and uh, departments that have or get oversight over this as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Variance granted. Thank you. Thank you very Looks much. Lovely. Well, he's outgrowing his current space, so he needs it desperately. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sylvia Heights. Uh, public hearing request for a variance under 652 of the Hattie Zoning Bylaw of Linda Hannum. Property located at 8 Sylvia Heights, Assessors Map 10C, Lot 20. It's an agricultural residential zone. Uh, applicant seeks variance from the side setback requirements to construct a standalone carport, car car uh, which will be seven feet from the side property boundary. Hello, my name is Linda Hannum. I live on Sylvia Heights. Uh, I'm going to make this really quick and easy. Uh, I had uh, thought about this years ago. Um, during COVID, I had Rick Bermucci come in along with Tim Nyhart to look at the possibility of putting a carport on the side of the house for extra car parking. Mm -hmm. um, because of the two by four price in COVID, mm -hmm. being 12 to $15 uh, a board, we chose to not pursue it at that time. Um, at that time, I did have a conversation with the then the neighbor, uh, Ali Nabala, and got a, sir, go ahead. And I said, I, all right, great, but I'm going to do this the right way. So we p tabled it for um, a number of years, and I just brought it back up. However, I am going to say that um, my relationship with my neighbors far exceeds my need to have a carport over a car that, that's in the driveway. So I'm going to withdraw my uh, request because I see there's some folks here that um, are upset about this and I care too much about them. So I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to make a comment. I'm Sarah Chadwick. My mother is a daughter, and I appreciate what you've done, Linda. Um, because thank you. Really, thank you very much. You're welcome. I care too much about your mom. And okay. Yes. Thank you. And we just learned last night that there was concern, so we didn't know that before this. Otherwise, we would have no, wasted your time. No, it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thanks for still showing up. We have 10 minutes before the next hearing. Do you need to stay? No, no, you're free to go. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. 
Folks, please feel free to sit down anywhere you'd like. It's that little house on the corner of East Street would have had a whole acre there. Yeah. It's a whole acre then? Yeah. It's just under an acre. Yeah, 1.06. Oh, 1.07. It depends on which one you are looking. Yeah, it's such a tiny house. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the lawn. It looks so wow, really. <laughs> it just as bad it has a decent amount of <coughs> area on the back. Is the house smaller? That's the one Peter Jelinek used to own right there, right? The valley. Yeah. Yeah, it's a small house. It had, you had like a long barn, but I think just the house itself was maybe like a two-bedroom, small. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. Uh, I feel it looks yeah. nicer now because uh, it's a valley. Yeah. Father, twenty seventeen, they 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 made that look nicer. Yeah, because it looked real bad for a while. A long time. Yeah. Yes, it's a lot. Uh, Rona is pretty expensive. <laughs> I'd, I'd say it depends on the potential of the lot, but yeah. Uh -huh. No, actually, you can't leave yet. <laughs> Ooh, now? Mm -mm. <laughs> can't just, you can't just walk out. Can, can we leave? <laughs> Not now. Actually, even if everybody is here, we need to wait until... Yeah, just because yeah. it's a public hearing. Yeah, because so. it's posted at 7.30. And it's on, if we, what if we wrap the hearing up and it's done at 7.30? Someone just shows up. Someone shows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zoning bylaws? Yeah. It just is the state the regulation. We kind of, uh, like a 40A, we I think it's, modify that. Yeah, I think it's adopted way. and modified as per the town's needs by the attorney. Okay. I'd imagine. Okay. I mean, it's approved, it's approved by town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's quite a bit of work. You know, I don't know who put the, who put the original bylaw together. I don't know. Wait, let's go back to it. 
they do meet. Um, but there's like a bylaw there's committee. A committee yeah. right now to change yeah. the bylaws. Mm. I don't know. It must have been, they must have hired a lawyer to do it or something when they first put yeah. it together. Yeah, they're a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Different kind of lawyer. Yeah, yeah. We're, I do like, uh, like corporate, like commercial stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Criminal defense. <laughs> <laughs> This is like a newer code. I like the old one better because this one has. There's like a table of. There's like a table of uses too that's not in here that you have. Have you ever seen that one in, on like the online one? The table of uses. It has like all the different things that are allowed in all the different thing in all the different areas. Oh, I just. Uh, Oh, I one from online. It's, it's a. Maybe uh, I proved that's the wrong word. There's there's an attachment. There's a like like an exhibit or something that they call it. Oh. That is like a, it's like a chart that has all the different. Um, like it will say like where you can put an airport or whatever, right? Like it has like all the different uses that you could. Oh, okay. That you could have. So that would be. If, that would. That was uh, one of the master really big uh, PDF for. Yeah. But they used to all be in the older like bylaw. They were all in the bylaw. It, it told you each thing that you could use, each thing, each use that you could do in each district. It said industrial district. The following like uses are allowed in the industrial district. It told you all the things you could do. In, but now it's like in the it's in a big chart now. I think it's a little yeah. harder to follow. But. Actually. It's interesting to look at that. I have a big screen, so I just put on. Yeah. And then you look at that big chart, and it's give a really <coughs> nice picture. <coughs> Different that people don't agree too well. So we will move on to the next hearing. Seven Cleveland Drive. Uh, public hearing request for a variance uh, under 6.2 of the Happy Zoning Bylaw. John and Jan's shot. Property located at Seven Cleveland Drive. Assessors Map 11, Lot 3 2. It's an agricultural and residential zone. Uh, the applicant seeks a variance from the side setback for placement of a shed uh, within two feet from the side property line. Anyone here on that one? Thank you. 
Um, about uh, five years ago, I started, uh, had the idea of building a shed in, behind the house in that area. And I did go down and talk to uh, Nyhart, uh, the building inspector, because I went down to give him uh, the measurements for width and length. And at that particular point, he said, uh, I didn't need a permit uh, at it because it was less than what? 250 feet, right. et cetera, out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I did ask him at that particular point uh, whether I can set it uh, close to the lot line. And he, he did say uh, that it was fine with him, but you should check uh, with the abutter on it also. Uh, I did uh, talk to uh, Eddie Glinski, who was the abutter on it, in regards to uh, putting it in close to the lot line on that particular, which just abuts on an agricultural field. And in of itself, he did uh, indicate to me that it was, uh, he would check with uh, his uh, brother, or his cousin, his brother, and family uh, members. One family member uh, in that respect. And uh, at some point, uh, he did come, uh, knocked on the door, and said that he <coughs> had spoken to them and uh, they okay that it was okay to put it where I had it at that particular point in time. Uh, and we then, was it November? I don't know. Roughly just before Christmas here, I believe, uh, uh, the new building inspector came to the house and uh, did indicate to me that uh, we need to move it 15 feet off of the property line itself, which wasn't, uh, when I had spoken to Nyar, there was nothing that was given to me in regards to uh, how far off the lot line it had to be in and in of itself. And uh, I'm uh, at the point where the only suggest the only thing I can do at this particular point, if we uh, don't get the variance, is um, I have to take it down completely. I can't move it. There's a tree in front of it and there's a tree behind it also. Oh. And uh, it just, I just don't have any sandwich in there. Go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, oh, only I thing, the only thing that holds on the inside is uh, basically my lawnmower and uh, uh, some lumber mm -hmm. that I use for building projects. Mm -hmm. And the land that it abuts is um, in conservation. Oh, I was uh, looking at the map. I was uh, thinking you have enough uh, space on both sides. Oh, there is a tree. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So this is five years ago you built the shed? Yeah, it was probably just about five years ago that I started building it, yes. And you're saying Tim Nyhart at the time gave you the go-ahead to put it that close to the property line? Yes. <clears throat> and so the catalyst that brings you here today was uh, um, Mr. Quinlan, the building inspector, coming by? The building inspector came to me, came to us and told us that uh, Eddie had said that we needed to move it back okay. from uh, where it is pre present to the 15-foot line. So a little, a little additional context on with what Tim might have been doing there. Tim um, was previously had a system in place where um, if people were building small sheds, like movable sheds, and they wanted to put them close to the property line, you could get a letter from your neighbor, and the uh, you, you would apply to Tim and to the building department, and you could get a letter from your neighbor to, to substantiate that the neighbor didn't have a problem with it. And then Tim, with that letter, Tim would put the letter in the file, and then he would let you build within the 15-foot setback. 
there were conditions in, in that program, like the, and I understand you're saying you didn't, he didn't give you materials on that, but the conditions of that program were that if a future neighbor came, came to the building department or, or the present neighbor changed their mind, that you would have to move the shed. So that was part of like the program. And we're not doing it that way anymore. Tommy's not running it that way. But that is part of what he didn't just like let them violate the zoning by law. He had like a system in place where he was it was a state letter of approval or something for the approval that with with the understanding that if in the future if somebody was somebody asked that you could that you would have to move the shed. It wasn't binding. No. Okay. I mean, the, the neighbor could change their mind, or, or, if, or if the neighbor sold the property, the, a subsequent like owner could change their mind on it. Hmm. And here we are. Mm -hmm. I said, and here we are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, do you have, uh, was this you brought here? Yes. Just a couple pictures of the shed? Yes. All right. So you're, <clears throat> have you, Contacted anyone about moving the shed? Um, like, is you know, I, is it I, possible to? There is, in, in all honesty, there's no way I can get any sort of a vehicle in there to move it because uh, basically the way the house sits in the back, and also there's also a lot of uh, trees on the south south there. Uh, on one side of the house, there's a lot of trees. On that side, there's a large tree in the back. Uh, and the only other way possible, you know, possibly would be is you know, they'd have to cut down the trees that are in front of it. And then... Okay. So it'd be a fairly substantial cost to have to move that. Yes. Yeah. You'd have to That's crane it or... <laughs> I know he built it. <laughs> okay. That's just some of the paperwork. Okay, just the abutters and everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll open up for public comment. Is yeah. There any, any public comment? Thank you. Yes, I'll be a buddy neighbor. And we signed up and written APR said Mr. Batkins in the shop for a violation of boundaries, throwing debris, stuff like that. I'll show you the letter. So they want me to get a survey. I got a survey. And he's around two feet, give or take a half a foot. He can't put a ladder up on my side, well, towards my side to safely work on the ladder. We got equipment going through there. It'll, he could fall backwards. In other words, he has no room to work. He just didn't plant ahead of time. You can get cotton tree service to cut trees. I'll show you the letter. So, APR has been up a couple times. The Mac has cleaned up their line nice. And we didn't throw any debris no, in yours. Uh, bricks, so concrete, but building materials, and cleaning some, but actually not much. If there's still some bricks in there, there's some debris when you store the stuff up there to build the shed, which that did not bother. What about all the trees that you cut on our property? I didn't cut none of your property. You cut yeah, them off, off, of, off of our branches. None. The boundary line is there, you're full of shit, basically. <laughs> Simple as that. And also, the surveyor couldn't find two boundary pits. We kept looking, looking, and there were two boundary pits that were missing the same style that were in your side of the line. I got pictures of those next to your boat. The bricks that are both sides back, I'll show them to you since you don't see them. You can use a refresher course on boundary lines. These are the original pins that were with the property back in 71, neutral green, but they set some. These are, see, I can see what I got, so I got some of the bricks. A little ratty. That's his canoe, that's some of the brush there. And these are some of the bricks I was talking about. He did, like, he did move most of the bricks over, so he's not, in, he did make an effort. But uh, definitely cut no trees on his side. And didn't we have a discussion or a dispute? When the tree overhangs near side, you can cut vertically straight up and overhangs. I know that. He says, I can't. I said, I got the papers. Well, I look at it. He said, no, I got my own. It's okay. 
So, and these are most likely the pins. I do not have them moving the pins, but they're in this position. Then they disappeared later on. So I had a severe coming in Berkshire. So it was a little extra work. And also APR I'm dealing with, and they want me to enforce the laws of the town because they border us. He falls off the roof, puts the ladder too close, he'll sue APR, they be liable, I'll be liable with my sister. <coughs> so it's a can of worms, him being so close, because he safely cannot even walk around the shed two feet or put a ladder on it. I'm not putting a ladder on it, right? Well, you can do shingles sometimes and pair work, so. It's a so metal APR, roof. Metal roof. Pardon? It's a metal, metal roof. roof. Hey, stuff's got to be repaired sooner or later. So, APR wants basically to go with his own laws, that's what you're there for. You got to sit, take and put a ladder up two feet, like about here, and it's, it's not an easy pitch. If you went 13 feet back, but it'd be a little safer. Two feet is, is not, it's not right. And APR wants me to enforce the laws because because they did give us financial support and they do have a deal with it with my sister, some kind of restrictions. <clears throat> and an aerial survey picked up when the boundaries were getting overgrown. The Mackins did not know about it because the guy who bought the house wasn't that long, it was a Sylvain's. He didn't know what he bought. Matt, this guy's shops were one of the original ones, so they do. So I wouldn't recommend two feet for safety with APR owns it, plus they don't want me to uh, Signed for that and his liability. And did you have any letter or anything from APR with that? I got them on the violation of the debris and stuff. I talked to Tina Smith, mm -hmm. but I can get you a copy That's of that. Okay. These are the boundary <coughs> lines, debris and stuff like that, fence are over. Mm -hmm. So once we figure where the boundaries are, it's only two feet away for safety. If we talk on the phone, but she wants me to basically keep the codes up, stuff like that, because I believe they're a state program, not federal. But I can get some more details. Because they have to with the neighbors, how they move their stuff back, stuff like that. So he didn't put their names in, Jackson, she did. But if you want more information, you can get Tina Smith right there. If you want to call her, or I can have her call you guys. So it's basically safety, because it's, it's, it's close. You've got big equipment. I read some of that land in Plango Farm. Sometimes we use some. So it says here that they do say that once those materials were moved. So we all agree that your surveyor would flag the line for clarity and then by the end of the fall, your neighbors will move their fence, debris, garden materials and trees back onto Which their Which is basically, property. yes. But now the shed's in violation. So if he puts a ladder, he's roughly two feet from the APR land, which I rent at Plainville Farms. I use some. And two feet's not enough room to safely walk around the building, carry something or go on the roof. So I get equipment driving by there. He falls off the ladder, slips. I mean, uh, it's just a risk for liability. APR says you don't really need to take that. And my sister said the same thing. Okay. And it's basically poor plan. You get cotton trees, up, like I said, they'll cut any tree you want. Your house is this one? No, that's my son. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah, good to try, yeah. Yeah, Shots got the first one. Mac, you know, can clean this place good. There's no problem with him. Yeah, Shots is, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, he's awful close. And it's okay. just for safety reasons. So. I just say, uh, yeah, just open. Thank you. You're welcome. Shed that's already built there. 
that, that sits on the farmland is ridiculous to me. So I'm supporting the shots at 100% in this. It's, 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 a, it's ridiculous. I'm a neighbor also, both of them. Um, John has helped me out tremendously, but if the issue is two feet safety and all, I have scaffolding that would allow John to go up and to do any repairs. And it's new scaffolding. So we, I would just set that up with John and, and he could go and do any repairs if necessary. Uh, Greg Owen, another neighbor. Um, if the main objection is mostly hypotheticals, I mean, cotton tree service can cut trees. You can also go rent a scissor lift that'll fit right, right nicely in there. So like money will fix a lot of problems, but I don't think it's reasonable to demand someone move a whole structure, disassemble a whole structure for reasons which don't seem to be at all germane. I mean, it's been there for five years and this hasn't been an issue. The issues that have existed along the property line seem to have been resolved, at least to most people's uh, standards. So I don't see why an unreasonable safety concern that doesn't seem to be an issue should make someone move a building. It has, it has also been um, a common theme that the neighboring farmer, Eddie, has asked the shed will have to be moved. And next time when we they speak to him, it's been the opposite. No, more, no worries about the shed until the day when they get a Notice from Tom and that, that now he has decided that the shed actually has to be removed. No, no time when APR has been on our property has talked to us have they complained about the shed. The the main issue was that we had a fence on his property and they had some bushes and shrubs that all have been removed. So it's been a dispute that we thought had been resolved for their matter and for ours as well. Mr. Schott, the barn doors that open on the gable end, is that facing your house? Or is, and no, it's facing my garden. Okay. <laughs> Opposite direction. Okay. So the side that directly abuts Mr. Grulinski's property is looking at the front of the barn doors, the right side there? Forgive me. The side is Mr. This Grulinski's? This right here is abutting. It, yeah, it's that about, side? It's roughly just shy of two feet from here to for the properly managed. Okay. <clears throat> Which side is the two feet side? Excuse me? Behind the Which side? The two feet side. The two feet this is, one? well, the two feet is from this point oh, in that okay. direction. Oh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, we, we got a bit, of a, with a bit of a pickle here. So, um, th this candidly is one of the, one of the problems with um, with kind of running like a voluntary um, program like that is that you get into problems down the road with uh, with the setbacks. Um, not a lot. Not. A, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Like, we have a lot of people coming in here asking to encroach on setbacks all the time. That's it's something that we deal with all the time. Um, it's a it's a fine line on you know in in the bylaw what it actually says about figuring these things out is it doesn't say anything about neighbors. It doesn't say anything about what the surrounding properties care about what's going on with it. It talks about the conditions that are on your property, why your property is is different than the other properties in the area why the, um, because of the shape of your property or the topography of your property or the soil conditions on your property. Um, you know, so a lot of times it's somebody, like the one the people that were in here earlier, they have you know, two front setbacks because they're on the corner. You know, there's, there's dimensional things going on, on on that property. So there's, those are the type of things that, you know, by the law we're supposed to, by like the bylaw we're supposed to take into account when we're like evaluating the variances and, you know, 
obviously what the neighbors care about these things does come into play. Um, but again, this is like one of the reasons why like that was like a difficult program that, that the building department was running was that even even like by the by the rules of that program that he was running, or the uh, I'm calling it a program. I don't even know if that's like it's probably like too like formal for what he was doing, but like by like by those rules, like they said, if your neighbor changes your mind, you're gonna, you might have to move your shed in the future. If the next neighbor changes their mind, you might have to move your shed. And so, like obviously, like there's a dispute here, like. And I, I, I like. I'm not saying that you guys are wrong for like wanting to leave it where it is, and I'm not saying your neighbors are wrong for saying that like it it feels unreasonable. But like that, like that's the nature of like setbacks, and like when like a neighbor feels strongly that they want a setback enforced, I'll speak for myself. Like I have a I have a hard time like going the variance route without like a lot of strong evidence for the variance, um, because like you know like, the setbacks like do kind of belong to your neighbor, right? Like that like that's. Like the way our bylaws set up, and I don't like always agree in how that applies, but like that, that is like kind of how the bylaw is set up, and I know that it feels like frustrating to people when, when it, like a neighbor really wants to enforce it, but um, like it protects you too, like it stops you from a neighbor getting too close to your property line if it's something that matters to you. I mean, I remember that there was an issue where the the. Um, the people that lived over next to the, um, or they, it was actually a rental property, whatever, but it's the people over by the senior center. They wanted to put the senior center, wanted to park a bus there, remember? Mm -hmm. and, and the people just like felt really strongly that they didn't want the senior center bus parked too close to their property. I don't know, they didn't like make like a ton of like logical sense to us. It was behind a barn and, and it was, it didn't really seem like it was gonna impact them, but they like felt strongly that like the bylaw, that the bylaw gave them the right to like, ask for it not to be there and I I said at that time I said during that hearing like I don't I, I don't want to make a neighbor like I, like I think we would lose this our board would lose this variance if we were to try to grant it we would lose this variance in court and I don't I don't I don't want to put the town in the position of trying to defend a variance that is not on strong grounds but I also don't it's not fair to to a neighbor to make a neighbor go to court to like enforce enforce their setback if like if they you know if they come to the board and they object like that's I mean that's my thoughts I don't the other question I got for you 10, 10 12 feet might make a difference he two he's less than two feet or close to two feet more or less you can't carry a bundle of, of anything to walk around so 10 12 feet would give him some walking room so let him measure up how so we move around 12 feet 10 feet that's a possibility have you had any estimates in terms of financial uh, impact of moving the shed, sliding the shed, lifting, no, dismantling the shed? No. I haven't. No, I haven't. I don't think we could get anybody in there to move it. Uh, we, I know you didn't. No, to hire. there there are mature trees there that I'm just not willing to take down, and you know I'm just sorry that he said we could, then he said we couldn't, then he said we could. He keeps changing his mind, and and. As far as the APR, I think that you ought to verify with them that they said it had to be moved. Because they've told us, Eddie's told us some things that the APR said, and then when the APR came, they said they didn't say that. So. I understand. I understand. But it, with that taken into consideration, as Mr. Bombardier stated earlier, that even if you had a letter in writing mm -hmm. from Mr. Galinsky saying that that was permissible at the time, it doesn't sound, it sounds like yeah, he has the ability to change his mind at any time. I understand that. I understand that. I don't think we have a place on the property to put the barn with a 15 foot setback. Someone else like I'm Flory, page seven, Bristol Lane, a neighbor. And I'm new to all of this and have listened to all of the arguments. And it seems to me that when you put the shed there, you were putting it two, two feet from the property line. And to me, I would never think, someone got up tonight, didn't want to carport seven feet from your property and apologized and left the meeting. And this is two feet. As Ed just said, you can't walk around your property. You can't walk around your shed and be on your own property. We don't need to walk around but, the shed. And they did their due diligence when they built it. They spoke to the building inspector and they spoke to the neighbors. So, I mean, they were told that this is all that needed to be done to have an acceptable structure. 
So I guess me, me being new to the, the game, I would look at it and say two feet doesn't make a lot of sense when the boundary is 50, when the setback is supposed to be 15 feet to take 13 feet off of a 15 foot measurement and go for two with a structure doesn't make a lot of sense. And I know that a lot of the land that Ed owns is kind of considered community property. People walk up there. People do in fact dump leaves and debris up there. You do. You do. So you shouldn't say you don't because you do dump in, on that property. And right. I don't think he minds. I don't think anyone is objecting, but piles of leaves and various material is dumped out there. It's considered kind of community property, and now that he has it in the preserve, well, that I think that's getting some other attention from other people, and it's putting him in a bad position. When Mac had bought Sylvain's place, Sylvain never told what he owned or nothing, so Mac, he got screwed because he bought a place and didn't check it out, so that was a problem. That I did let Sylvain go live with the college with the guy. So that was an issue, but also on Shot Farm, he piles up board somewhere probably one by ten, something like that up there. So you pile the board to already two feet. So his ass is already hanging on my boundary. So he's always walking around. You, you just ain't up the road. Uh, if you guys want to think of work, like you said, in court, you know, you got to hold up in the town. 12, 13 feet is a possibility. But like I said, you plan ahead of time when you build stuff. This is, and like I said, it's not that much of cut a tree, stuff like that. I mean, he just, what well, you go right in his yard now, you have town laws go. You can't park in the roads in the winter. He has one of these pop up trailers just about all summer. He leaves it in the cul de sac and turn around. Carous oil trucks come up. You just can't make that nice, lazy sweep. He's out of room for everything. These guys just overpopulate, you overdo things, and that's why you run into trouble. Can I ask you a question? In your situation now, I understand that the rule of law pertains to what you're doing. So, in what do you think the question for you guys would be? Is it 98% of the situations you have where it abuts on someone's house directly there? While well, this situation here just abuts on farmland. There's no one there, right? And it was built in good faith. So, for example, do you ever visit, do you ever visit properties? I would recommend a visit to this property and see exactly, exactly what we're talking about here because it's absurd. I, under, I understand that, but if Mr. Glinsky's house is a thousand feet away or, or you know, a hundred feet away, it's still encroaching from the minimum setback of 15 feet upon his property, not necessarily his structure or his house. No, so I we, that, we do, like, you know, usually, like, like Mr. Bombardier stated, like, usually under these circumstances, people come with support of a neighbor or, uh, you know, and, and in those, you know, we, 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 we approach every case individually upon its own merits but two feet, two feet is very close. two feet is very close to the property line I would, I, I would basically say um, if I knew when I started to Niagara, there was no indication whatsoever that there was a 14 or a 15 foot line mm -hmm. that I had to go to nothing was ever said in that in that time period. Mm -hmm. The only time I found that there was a 15 foot setback was when Quinlan came and told us that we had to set it back by 15 feet. Mm -hmm. Now it may have been in the, the laws, I don't know, but there was never any word whatsoever that had come to us that said, you know, like it you need to that. back it yeah. blank to blank. Because if I had known that, the answer would be, I would have put it mm -hmm. on that particular line, as opposed to asking the other way. Yeah, um, I, everybody is in a really bad predicament right now. I've been working with the building department for nine years, and unfortunately, it was told to people that, um, so you do not need a permit for a fence. If the fence can be put on your property line, but we always tell people, you know, you're better off, if it has to be maintained to set it in at least a foot or more so you can maintain it on the other side without encroaching on the neighbor's property. As far as the sheds, if it's under 200 square feet, you do not need a building permit. So some people will just go put up a shed without even questioning, or if they do question, back then, Tim would just say, you know, it, if you do put it closer to the property line, there is a chance you have to move it. 
we now, do we tell people that even if it's under the 200 feet and you do want to put it closer to the property line, that they should be coming in front of the ZBA. And unfortunately, back then, that was the situation that wasn't happening. And actually, there are several people that have had to move their sheds because new developments or new owners have moved in and actually, uh, one of them, the shed was actually on the other property. Um, but it was a development that came in after the fact. So unfortunately, that's the situation. So when Mr. Budlinski came in about his whole situation with the APR, the only thing that we can suggest is that Mr. Schock come in and speak to you guys um, and get your input and take on it. Um, but it is a, a hard situation that they were, that everybody was put into, I believe. And I honestly never agreed with the whole situation from day one when I worked there that I, I was thought, um, just like when Linda Hannum was in here earlier, she did have the neighbor prior say over a year ago that she didn't have a problem with it. Problem is the neighbors that, or the people that would buy it later on down the road, that was an actual gonna be a structure that could not be removed. So that's why we told her, you have to definitely come in front of the ZBA. So unfortunately, a lot of people don't or aren't aware of this, and so I'm hoping people who are watching the meeting will be aware now that um, in all doubt of anything, you know, contact us because we'd be more than happy to actually let people know so you don't end up in a situation like this because I know it makes it hard for the board also. Yeah, I, thank you. Um, yeah, I will say that I don't think we've ever granted a variance for less than six or seven feet. And although each, each case presents its unique parts that we take into consideration, usually those come with the majority of a butter support. Um, and I don't think, uh, I think. I don't think we've ever granted a variance where a butter has showed up and said they don't. No. They don't want the variance. No. Um, so with that said, I'm very sorry, but uh, I at least will be making a motion to deny your variance. We understand. Um, uh, you know, it's difficult. It's a difficult situation. Um, what I would recommend is up, it's up to you guys. Um, yeah. I think uh, if you would, if if we move on it tonight and vote against it, then uh, there's a two that we take. There's a two year like waiting period to ask if you for any other type of variance on the shed. Uh, if you withdraw it and then you come up with a plan as, as uh, Eddie has suggested of like 12 feet or something, if there was like a way that you could come up with a plan, you could come back before to ask for another one uh, with, you know, quicker if, if there was a, a plan that like worked. Yeah, because if we deny you tonight, it, it's two years that you'd have to wait to approach it again or reapply for a different scenario. So we'd like to present you with the opportunity to withdraw if you'd like to try to work something out, or if you'd like to withdraw. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Good luck. Yep. Thank you. Six point two, 
had the zoning bylaw. Uh, Richard Gata, Paul Boutine. Property located at 1 Cold Spring Lane, Assessor's Map 13, Lot 17-1A. Agricultural residential zone. Applicant seeks a variance from a setback requirement for construction of an addition on the house, which will be uh, 25 feet from the rear property line. Hi. 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 I'm Paul Boutine. I'm Rich Gata. Hi. And we just recently uh, purchased and moved into one Cold Spring Lane, which is a corner property, um, North Hadley. And I have some material here that you may have already seen. What we're proposing is to Thank you. Yep, go into our backyard um, for both a sunroom and an expansion of the kitchen. And the proposal is to go at most 15 feet into the backyard which is 40 feet so 15 into the 40 and that 15 would encompass the sunroom and the kitchen expansion would be 10 feet and a length of 33 between the two rooms and right now there is an outdoor deck that is about 12 feet into the backyard how much further would the addition protrude beyond the existing deck the, the, deck goes the, the deck goes 12, so the sunroom would be three feet beyond the deck. The kitchen would actually be a little less than the deck. Okay. By a foot and a half, two feet. And it would be one level, so it's a, it's a ranch style home. Uh -huh. It's one level, we're not talking a two story. It would right. be the same roof line yeah. as the uh, existing home, which you can see mm -hmm. in the backyard pictures today. And it would go from the end which is on the driveway to the deck. So it wouldn't go beyond the footprint of the house toward River Drive. It would line up to- It carries the, that line. That's right, it carries the line. Okay. Exactly. You know how, how old that deck is? We do not. We've been in the house a month. <laughs> Well, welcome to town. Yeah, we're yeah, we're so far. <laughs> we do love it here. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to thank everyone for coming out. What <laughs> <laughs> do the neighbors think? I know. <laughs> Great catch. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is another one of those ones that, depending on the age of that deck, it might not, it maybe is not even really an actual variance, right? Because the deck is non-conforming. Mm -hmm. If the deck is part of the original house, then um, it's probably pre-existing non-conforming. Do you know how old the house is? Yes, 72, 73 it was built. And it's pretty aged, it's, the deck is aged. Yeah. I'm not saying it's well, 50 yeah, years those old. Those wouldn't, reels wouldn't cut. Uh, but the, I'm just saying the footprint, yeah. if there was something there before, it could have, I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter really. But, right. Uh, I mean, I think, just to lay down my, like, my thought process, process on it is like, you know, you're already in the setback, so this is like an expansion of the use of the setback too. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really, you know, like you said, it's really, it's not really the, even the full 15. It's really more of like a, it's really more of like a three foot uh, encroachment because the the deck is already 12 feet, 12 right. feet there. Um, Just out of curiosity, how are you familiar with how the roof? Like, will it be a gable end over the sunroom and the kitchen, or will it be a lower sloping roof out, kind of like a shed roof? We haven't figured that out totally yet, okay. but we're not going to go probably much higher. It, it wouldn't go above this. The existing ridge. It would go above the top of the current yeah. roof. Yeah, right. like, yeah, I even noticed like our next door neighbor on the side of us has a, the house the same direction as us, but they put on a sunroom and the uh, roof pitches the other way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're, we're not going to do that. We're, yeah. we're going to do whatever an architect. Sure. Right, right but we won't house. go above the current top current peak ridge. of the right. house. Okay. Right. Correct. These people don't, have you talked to any of the neighbors? We don't know any of the neighbors. Yeah, we see them when we walk the dog, but we have not talked to any of the we neighbors. Are, we only know across, across the street. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Put it all the abutters, guys. Nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> <right>. Yeah. <laughs> We're very popular. <laughs> just, uh, you only have one neighbor, right? You just uh, this one. Yes, yes. She, and she's 
she's there. She's a side view because she's on River Drive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, she's yeah. she's here, and we we are here, and you know we're kind of both yeah, on so River her, Drive. Her side and, her side is our back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And she appears to be like 15 feet to the property line. She is right, right there with her mm -hmm. garage. And with why do they call that the set? Why do they call that a back set back there? Do you know the answer to that, Dee? What's that? They're on the corner, so they're calling that a back setback. It's actually kind of a side setback. So the setbacks on the corner, fifty and fifty, from the corner. From the so corner. From the back. Of why the house. they call? Why are they call that the back of the house? Though it looks like. That. Well, the orientation of the house is on Cold yeah, Spring, no, not River Drive. Yeah, the orientation, there, so where they want to do the addition is in the backyard, is yeah. your backyard. Well, your front door faces Cold Spring and the garage faces River Drive. Yeah. I mean, that's not the front of the house, I would say. Oh, because that's the, well... It's the yes, side of the house that abuts River Drive. Are they I mean, they, they got frontage on both. Are they both, are they, they have two fronts and two backs? I guess if you... Okay, we actually talked to the they planning. They actually do have two driveways, which is quite Wow, well, you have two shocking. curb cuts there. Yeah, it's yeah. a circular. And we, we have a driveway and we have a door, too. And we did actually talk to the planning board, but they suggested we come here first because it seemed like there might it's be the opportunity to... Everyone does. Yeah. Say, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. They say, wait, do you guys do the heavy lifting? Somewhere in the bylaws, is if you have a quarter lot, and particularly if you have a driveway on both streets, mm -hmm. the owner, but maybe this is designated when they first move in, I says, but they so you have the choice of which you want front and back. But, uh, yeah, but it's those yeah. I mean technically they would have to keep the driveway as the one Cold Springs uh, street because of uh, otherwise they'd have to change their address. Yeah. Yeah. But they changed the So this is a weird this is like what we were talking about earlier. Like so this to me is a weird situation where the shape of the property is unusual, and like you're you're getting a hardship because of that. Because, like that's you're sandwiched. Most, pe most people would. I mean, you you have two fronts, so you have to stay 50 feet off of those ones, and then you got to stay 40 feet off that. Yeah. I mean, which would yeah. be that that's your neighbor's side lot. Your neighbor only has to stay 15 feet off of that, and you got to mm -hmm. stay 40 feet off of that. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. the other thing is like the side of our house, which is, you know, if it was, is really wide mm -hmm. <laughs> going going from yeah, that end of the house would be very to over there it, yeah. it's it's, it's a stretch right yeah that's right yeah. river drive um so i mean i i think this is one of those situations where this is um you know an unusual lot shape and setback situation and uh how far is that shit off the property line <laughs> <laughs> can we put the camera off yeah. before i answer that no, I think it, I'm going to go home and measure actually after that last discussion. I'm glad, I'm glad that gentleman there is not here. <laughs> so the cheer guard is also all bushed, right? In the yeah, it's all trees. Oh, yeah, you can't see the arbors. Yeah, you can't. So when you put in the addition, uh, nobody, the, the abutter cannot even see. Right. That. Yeah. right. And plus, they're closing in the deck as well. They want to see it too. So. Yeah, like to that's Mr. Bombardier's point, like that shared property line, your abutter has to stay 15 feet, yet you're required because that's considered the back setback 40. that you have yes. to do 40. Right. right. Um, and you're way more than 40 feet off of this one. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I guess, that, I guess they're saying that that's a side setback. Um, yeah. I, but you got, are you 50 feet off the road here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably more like you measure. Close to 70. Almost. Okay. Oh. How about off the front? You got 50, 50 feet off the front? Yes. <laughs> we know who that is. Yeah, it's over 50, right? Yeah, yeah, so one of, my, one of my big uh, like missions of trying to work with Tommy on is that there's flexibility for people that are pre-existing non-conforming. Mm -hmm. And the state wants people to be able to fix up old houses. So there's flexibility for pre-existing non-conforming. So when people's houses are closer than 50 feet, they don't have to get variances. They can get... There's easier routes for them Findings. to make additions and stuff onto their houses. Mm -hmm. In particular, for like single-family homes, not mm -hmm. it's different for like commercial properties. But uh, like the yeah, but so I'm always like curious. I'm always trying to identify all the people. <laughs> <laughs> Hobby horse. Um, yeah, I think you're kind of held between some constraints here that would prevent you from doing anything without seeking the variance. Um, and being that it's on the back of the house and that you're well sheltered um, and you're... I know what part of the problem, you didn't have time to get it like surveyed. Do you think the house is actually right on 40 feet? Uh, it, it's hard, hard to tell. It's, a, it's 40 feet to the fence, but then we're, we're, you know, I found 
a metal post that was maybe one or two feet further. Beyond but I'm not sure if that's the right you one. You see that picture, the trees are beyond the fence on the back. Yeah, there's a line. Oh, well, you know we didn't get the trees in the picture. Yeah, I'm there's sorry. a big line of. Well, the tree, you can kind of see them. Yeah, the fence is here and the trees. So the trees are a couple feet beyond the fence. So it's They're hard to say. Right if, if anything, yeah, it's only trees one or, are, it would yeah. only be one or two feet right. if, if, it, uh, if that was the way. I think it should be a side setback, in kind of my opinion. Yeah. I'm not going to tell Tommy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Tommy already did mention that because of the deck already being there, yeah, right. it's pre-existing. And also the fact that their property line could be farther back but because of the bushes and everything else, that it's a little harder to tell. Well, what do you think? I'd say I'll make a motion to grant a variance under 6.2 of the Hadley uh, Zoning Bylaw for Richard Gata and Paul Bouton. Property located at 1 Cold Spring Lane, um, uh, seeking relief from the minimum back set, uh, setback, uh, which will be 25 feet from the rear property line for proposed addition. Um, Second that. Any? Favor. Oh, yeah. All those Aye. In favor. Thank you. Okay, great. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Have a great night. I bought a very old house 30 years ago. I didn't know any of these. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're the expert. Yeah. <laughs>